Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited, Santa Monica runway TRO lifted. Melanie Astell's is first woman to win a Red Bull Air Race. And World War II Airborne Demonstration Team Foundation C-49 flies again. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's October 20th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The city of Santa Monica may now proceed with shortening the runway at Santa Monica Airport after a temporary restraining order halting the work was lifted by U.S. District Judge Ronald Liu, who had put it in place. Airport Director Stelios Macready said that the city is pleased with the court's decision, which allows it to fulfill its commitment to the community and the FAA. The city will renew work on the runway shortening project, which it expects to commence within the next week. The court had put the TRO in place at the request of Santa Monica's Kate Scott and James Babinski, a pilot. They said that the city had failed to meet public hearing requirements when it made the decision to shorten the runway as part of the overall agreement with the FAA to close the airport entirely by the end of 2028. They also said that shortening the runway would make the airport less safe. Judge Liu said that Scott and Babinski would likely prevail at trial on the merits of their claim. Also noted that the city had not filed opposition to the TRO. Shortly after the order was imposed, the city filed 1,400 pages of documents supporting its case and requested an expedited review. French pilot Melanie Astells became the first female pilot to win a Red Bull Airways when she won the Challenger class, the Red Bull Air Race in Indianapolis. The win came after she was the fastest in qualifying on Saturday. When bad weather meant the racing was canceled on the Sunday, the results stood and she was declared the winner of their weekend's racing. After her historic win, she explained what it meant to her. I'm really happy for this victory. When I flew the qualification round, I guessed it would be the race as I had seen the forecast, and so I played it like it was a race. But I wanted to fly today. I'm happy for my first win, but I wanted to win today too. She said that that being the only woman in the Red Bull Air Race presented unique challenges. She said it was not easy to be a girl in a man's world. Technically, it is the same, but there are some different psychological effects of being a girl. You are opening a door, but there is no difference in the air. After the break, World War II Airborne Demonstration Team Foundation C-49 flies again. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at arrow-news.net. For the past three years, the Tulsa Squadron of the World War II Airborne Demonstration Team Foundation has been working diligently to restore the organization's Douglas C-49 Wildcat. Major restoration work has been provided by many skilled volunteers from the local aviation industry and also by interested aviation history enthusiasts in the Tulsa area with more than 15,000 man-hours of effort put into the project to date. Now, the aircraft has again been certified as airworthy and returned to the air at Richard Lloyd Jones Jr. Riverside Airport in Tulsa. 
The C-49 was flown from the organization's headquarters at the former Frederick Army Airfield in Frederick, Oklahoma on January 24, 2016, exactly 75 years from the date of its first flight from the Douglas plant in Santa Monica, California. Since its arrival in Tulsa, there has been major restoration work done on the Wright Cyclone power plants, propellers, structure, and electrical and hydraulic systems. Cosmetic improvements have also been made throughout the interior and exterior of the plane. With the completion of the aircraft, it can now return to the skies and fly alongside the organization's C-47 Boogie Baby and participate in Jump School, which is held three times each year in Frederick. It's Friday, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with this weekly barnstorming commentary. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. You've seen some great presentations by a number of very famous aviators in opposition to ATC privatization. From a not-so-famous aviator, I'd like to add one more. And while I haven't flown around the moon of late, and I certainly haven't landed an Airbus in the Hudson, I still think, as one of the rank-and-file aviators, I've got something important to say. What I do have is this, 19,000 hours as a pilot in all manner of vehicles, a number of years in the system, decades in the system, working everything from flight instructor to airline pilot to you name it, I've worked in the experimental community, the certified community, you name it. And I have defended this industry to the best of my ability against unsafe aircraft, unsafe companies, unsafe people, and bad business. I know what's good and I know what's right to a high degree of certainty, more than most, because of who I am and what I do for the Aero News Network. So let me make this clear. H.R. 2997, is a bad bill. It is being put forth by people who are lying to the American public, who think that modernization equals privatization, which is wholly untrue. We have made great strides in privatization, but the problem is, is it requires not only funding, but steady funding, funding that the FAA can plan for. And they haven't gotten it from the very elected officials who are now seeking to give this away to people whose own businesses, i.e. the airlines, are violating people's rights, hurting people, defrauding people, and oh yeah, kind of screwing the public at every turn. So, very simply put, HR 2997 is bad business. It's bad aviation. It's not good for the country. We have, so far, the safest aviation system in the world. It's not perfect until you look at everybody else's. The plain fact of the matter is simply this. 2997 is dangerous. It's dangerous to our infrastructure. It's dangerous to the flying public. It's dangerous to the economics of this country. And most important of all, it will not make aviation safer. It will make aviation less safe. And it will put aviation in the hands of people whose primary livelihoods or primary allegiances are not to the aviation public, or for that matter, the aviation industry, but to the bottom line. H.R. 2997 is bad business, bad aviation, bad safety, and must be defeated. For the Aero News Network, for Airborne, for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, a rank-and-file flyer, just like the rest of you. After the break, Morgan Stanley sees a bright future for SpaceX. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Of so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. (music) 
SpaceX could grow into a $50 billion company on the back of its satellite broadband network, according to a team of analysts from Morgan Stanley. A report released last Thursday by the investment firm indicates that the plan for a space-based broadband network is a cash cow for SpaceX as they work to reduce the cost of launches to as little as $5 million per mission with flight-proven boosters providing internet service will give Elon Musk and company enough cash to mount his dream for Mission to Mars. The National Museum of World War II Aviation in Colorado Springs has acquired a Douglas Dauntless bomber to add to its collection and it is expected to be on display soon. The Dauntless had been ditched in a lake by a student pilot and later rammed by a sidewheel steamer. It was recovered and restored by collector Jim Slattery, who has donated several airplanes to the museum. BIS Research has compiled a market intelligence report entitled Global Fixed Wing VTOL Aircraft Market Analysis and Forecast 2017 through 2026. The report identifies the global fixed wing VTOL aircraft market under different segments such as types, end users, and geography. According to the analyst, the global fixed wing VTOL aircraft market reported a revenue of $1.9 billion 2016. Commercial segment is expected to account for the highest revenue by the forecast year 2026. For the first time, NASA scientists have detected a light tide to a gravitational wave event thanks to two merging neutron stars in the galaxy NGC 4993, located about 130 million light years from Earth in the constellation Hydra. NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope picked up a pulse of high energy light from a powerful explosion, which was immediately reported to astronomers around the globe as a short gamma ray burst. Last fall, the Swedish Supreme Administrative Court ruled that a camera mounted on a drone is considered a CCTV camera for purposes of the Swedish Camera Surveillance Act. New legislation has now been passed to exempt the private use of drone cameras from the permit requirements, making drone use in Sweden legal again on August 1, 2017. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. Honda Aircraft Company customers Julian and Kim McQueen returned to their home in Pensacola, Florida, completing their around the world 80 stays, journeying in the Honda Jet covering 28 different countries. This marked the first around the world flight for Honda Jet. The trip covered 24,500 nautical miles, 44 airports, and 80 flight hours. As leaders in the hospitality industry, the McQueens used the tour in part for research related to their business visiting hotels in the various cultures. Opportunities to see the Honda Jet were provided in the world through static displays and demo flights. I am pleased to welcome our esteemed customers back to the United States and excited to see the spirit of adventure Julian and Kim demonstrated with their Honda Jet. The Honda Jet enriches people's lives in various ways, and I hope Honda Jet continues to create new value for people," said Honda Jet Aircraft President and CEO Michi Masa Fujino. A great many people around the world who saw the Honda Jet in person showed a high level of interest, and their excitement has been remarkable. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you Monday.